welcome to another edition of uh, Voices. My name is Augustine Ambe, and you are? Rogers Akembo. Uh, Rogers, uh, the past two weeks have been weeks where we've talked about La Republic's war in, uh, in, in Manfe, in Manu. Uh, but I want us to go a little further back and, 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 and deal with uh, two, two, uh, two names that we've been called, or two definitions that, they've tried, that La Republic has tried to apply to us. Uh, the first one I want us to deal with is the one of secession. They've been calling, they've been calling us secessionists. And I, uh, I, and I just wanted us to take some time and, and clarify to people uh, the lie that is in, in that name calling. Because we are not secessionists. And I know there have been two leaders uh, of, our, of Ambazonia uh, one, a prominent lawyer, Gojedinka, he, I think he took some time to, to, uh, to clarify who the secessionist is when it comes to uh, the unity of La Republic and, and Ambazonia. The country that has seceded from Union is La Republic de Cameroon, which has seceded. They declared their secession on February the 4th, 1984. It is they who have seceded. And we say, you must follow your secession to the logical conclusion by pulling out of Amazonia, or we have to stage a liberation war. It's a decolonization, not a secession. We are trying to decolonize ourselves from a secessionist country which is imposing its rule on us after they have seceded. Please, have this in your mind in order to hit back at those who say you are secessionists. They are the secessionists. They have seceded, and we are asking them to pull back, having seceded. Thank you. Uh, the other one that they've, uh, that they've called us is that we are terrorists. I think uh, Siseko, uh, in response to Paul Bia, clarified who the secessionist, in, or who the terrorist in this, uh, in, 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 this, uh, in, this, in this conflict has been. What is a terrorist? What are the actions of a terrorist? A terrorist is a person who goes out and kills people indiscriminately. A terrorist is a person who forces citizens of their nation to live and go in exile. A terrorist is a person who goes in the dark of the night to maim people, to rape girls, and to kill them. If this is a definition of a description of a terrorist, then Mr. Bia, Mr. Isa Chiruma, and all his cohorts are the real terrorists in this crisis. So let's take let's take the the, the secessionist thing first. Uh, you know, you only succeed from something where you are, where you've been one. You understand what I'm saying? You do not succeed from uh, if two parts come together and then the two parts are separating or need to separate. There is no secession. It is two coming together. Uh, um, do you have anything to add to this before we continue? Yeah, I mean, you make you have made that argument, and the argument that you just made that we are not seceding. I think uh, uh, our dear brother uh, Gojidinga made a mistake there to even state that La, La Republic was the one seceding based on their pres presidential decree of 1984 because La Republic cannot be seceding from something that was never won. Well, he, this, this, what, this, this is what Gojidinga said. Gojidinga said in 1961 we were supposed to come together as a federation. Mm -hmm. and that the federation really did not take place. It was not even a federation to start with. They okay. called it Federal Republic of Cameroon, but it wasn't a federation since Ahijo had the power to appoint and dismiss government in Buya. A federation, the government of each state manages its own affairs. It is, by its own constitution, appointed or deposed according to its constitution. Mm -hmm. But let's assume that the federation took place, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Then... We were, there was West Cameroon and then there was East Cameroon. Mm -hmm. La Republic dropped its name of La Republic to Cameroon and Southern Cameroon dropped its name of Southern Cameroons. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he takes some time and explains this in, in international law mm -hmm. that the two countries die and a new country is born. Mm -hmm. And that new country was the Federal Republic of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. In 1972, that was that 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 union was broken mm -hmm. but he says that ahijo break it but kept it's uh, um but kept uh, but kept 
something which we still show that there were two people that came together by calling us uh the united republic of cameroon mm -hmm. it still has it still has that connotation that there were two parts that came together yes in 1984 84, paul bia came and seceded mm -hmm. from that united republic and went back to its original name which was supposed to be buried when we two came together to form a new nation 1985 the lawyer Dika protested that the constitution had been violated and he, he produced a document called a, a new social order. It was on the basis of that uh, document that he was detained for nine months. By that he's saying that the, the succeeding partner in that union was La Republique du Cameroon, mm -hmm. not the Southern Cameroons. And so when you secede, you allow Southern Cameroon to, 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 to have no other choice but to go back to its original name. Yeah, so my problem is the word secede in what you have just described. Because when you say succeed, what you're actually saying is that this is something that was won, that now part of it is seceding, because that's what secession is. When uh, the Biafran people in the Federal Republic of Nigeria tried to go their own way, that was separating. What is, that, was, that was seceding. That was secession, yes. What is happening today in Spain, in Catalonia? Because these countries have defined boundaries international boundaries as one people as one people one country so when you try to go out like catalonia is trying to do now in spain and carve catalon out of the the, the, the the spain the country spain the traditional spain that with all that the whole world has known yes from the beginning yes that is then seceding where i tell you that i have a problem with that is that remember in uh, united nations resolution 1608 in that resolution, it was said we are going to gain independence by joining La Republique du Cameroon. And those two entities are going to be two separate states in equal status. It did not say we are going to be one. There is nowhere in that resolution that it said we are going to be one. For us down the road now to start thinking that somebody is seceding. You see where my argument is. Mm -hmm. So that is the problem. So you're, you're trying to say they formed a confederation. It was a confederation and it was said it was never supposed to be one. Never. Well, let me, now that you mentioned it, let me say that in that, uh, during the plebiscite, the people of Southern Cameroons voted for, uh, voted in that plebiscite to join La Republic. And that joining was defined. There are quite a number of people who do not know that there is a 15 page document explaining the meaning of each joining yes there were only eight items that were supposed to share with la republic yes we're not supposed to become one country and so and and this so-called one indivisible no there were only eight items that were supposed to share with la republic page 13 of the uh, of the manifesto it states out the powers which the federal government has right to interfere in mm -hmm. it states them there are only eight Mm -hmm. okay. Only eight subjects where the federal government may legislate in. You mean the federal government of the of the, the, of the, of of the, the two Cameroon? Yes, the conf that's why I call it a confederacy. Okay. The confederacy, the Cameroon and Bazonian confederacy, the authorities of the confederacy may legislate in only these eight matters. And what are the eight again? They are public freedom, nationality, national defense, foreign affairs, higher education immigration and immigration uh, federal budget post and telecommunications the union that were really supposed to be a merge and become part of uh who can think i was nigeria with la republic to cameroon there were only eight items that were go that were supposed to share and gojidika again does take take time in explaining the eight items that were supposed to share now we, we have to find some time and actually have that those two alternatives and and share with the rest of the, the public because it's, it's a document that was printed and was used for the campaign, and that's what the people of Southern Cameroon voted for. They never voted to go and become Francophones and, and let Francophones come and kill our government and take over our country and now going around killing our people and calling us secessionists. Outside this eight, it is written that in non-federal matters, the states have exclusive competence. So there is not going to be any place for, for conflict of authority in non-federal matters. And what, what are some of those non-federal matters? Now let me bring them out to you. You compare this 
with what we had with Nigeria. In with what we had with Nigeria, this is what the federal authorities would have exclusive competence. You look at them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will get them here. Now, aviation, aviation, external borrowing, currency, and coinage. Do you hear currency in this one? No. Huh? No. Now, uh, copyright, customs, and excise. Do you have customs and excise in that one? No. no. All right. Please. Defense and police. Uh, that's the defense. Is where there's what there's what you have in that one, which there is concurrency mm -hmm. between us and them on defense. Then you have uh, external affairs, it, external trade, nothing in that one about external trade, mm -hmm. immigration and immigration concurrent, incorporation and regulation of companies, insurance, shipping, mining, and minerals, including oil and natural gas. That was a federal matter mm -hmm. in our own, it's not mentioned. See, we don't even have this knowledge. Well, <laughs> naval, military, and air forces. Uh, is it mentioned here? No. no. Now, uh, nuclear energy, patents and trade, uh, post, post and telecom communication is mentioned there. That's where we have any conf uh, con concurrent, uh, concurrent jurisdiction with, with Yaoundé. Uh, trunk roads, company taxes, wireless broadcasting, and so on. These are things exclusively the for the states. Then go add more. These ones here, antiquities, arms and ammunition. Did you hear it there? In the one with Cameroon? No. Uh, bank, uh, bankruptcy, census, commercial and industrial monopolies, combines and trust, labor, industrial relations, all this added to these other things would be within the exclusive jurisdiction of Buya, except those other eight where Buya authority can be supplanted by the federal authority. So we had a choice between being absorbed into Nigeria where we have nothing. In fact, as far as Nigeria is concerned, once we got into Nigeria, we would be able to deal only with primary education, cooperatives, and agriculture. But in this other one, it is the reverse. We had everything. That's why it was a confederacy between Cameroon and Ambazonia. We were never part of these people on the, the framework of how this thing was designed, the structure of it, and everything. We were never one. We were never meant to be one. And we had our own international recognized boundaries. And remember, that is the reason why La République du Cameroon and France were one of the countries that voted against Resolution 1608, uh, subset 15, against our independence, because they never wanted us to be an independent people. In our system, in the system that was operating in Amazonia, you had what you call Public accountability, commissions of inquiry. I called for commissions of inquiry, and the government was bound to put three commissions of inquiry. As was, I was just a practicing lawyer. You could call for a commission of inquiry, and so 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 and so. If the Amazonian government was in existence, they would have asked for a commission of inquiry into the use of oil money, and that is why it has been necessary to crush. That loud talking group of people. But that resolution of the United Nations went in our favor. Our boundaries were all set. We were an international country, international entity recognized by the international community. And we acceded to independence by joining these people with specific parameters of what that structure and uh, uh, unit was supposed to be. The United Nations adopted it and put it here on this plebiscite manifesto as the second alternative. That is what our vote, people voted for. The second alternative being a confederacy of sovereign nations, just like the European Union, where you have a European parliament there which coordinates and harmonizes policies between European countries on things like immigration, uh, agriculture, 
uh, defense and all this. It is that's what is happening in Europe. But nobody goes to tell Britain how many soldiers he should have, how many um, uh, air forces, and so on. So each one has his business. Yeah, they have their customs and exercise. Each one has his currency and so on. So we never became part of these people, and there is no way anybody can explain any form of secession from what we are trying to do with Liberia. Republic. If you, can want, if you want to use any kind of adjective, it will be separation. That was how it was supposed to be. And that's what's what we were presented with by the United Nations, and that is what we voted for. Question is, is that what we got? No. No, absolutely. So we voted for this, and all we are asking is, what we voted for should be given to us. They proposed it, we accepted it. That is what they call a social contract between us and the international community. So what you were challenging in 1985 was, was, um, was even, I mean, I know in 1985 you wrote the social order. With, yes, with, in 1985. Right. So you in 1985, I had not seen this document. Okay. I was only dealing with an interpretation of the law of 1984, 84 stroke 01. Okay. I call it the dissolution law because that law dissolved the illegal union between Buya and Yaoundé. What Gojidika is saying is, okay, let's go with your, with your fraudulent position or the fraud that you've been perpetuating because even, even with the fraud there should still be some logic in it that is a question for which i'm now in exile interpret comp uh, comply with your own law he promulgated it you mean paul Bia? yes paul Bia asked him comply that is why we're asking them comply with your law get out of our country according to your law mm -hmm. even by the logic of that fraud they still succeed not us yes they, yeah they, well, they still left they separated I, 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 let us stay with the, no, the, the yeah, I mean, that defines because part of what is happening to our struggle is that people have been defining who we are and what we are trying to accomplish. And and, and it's and it's totally void of the facts. Yes, and we, we, we are not going to let that happen. Yes. If you listen to VOA, John Fundy was on VOA, uh Ebenezer Akwang was on VOA, and I think uh, Bobga has been on VOA. And this guy on African Nightline keeps pushing this thing. You go to BBC, they keep pushing it. You are secessionists and this and that. Well, those people, we are supposed to tell them exactly what... Now, we're not secessionists. Yes, who no. we are and what we are trying to accomplish. So I'm not going to entertain any kind of uh, definition, any try, don't, somebody trying to box us in into this, this argument. No, it was not, you have to look at the definition of this word what that word means it means there is an entity and part of that entity is trying to break away cessation is breaking away but you if know, two people come together if you get married to your wife or a woman get married to the husband tomorrow and for some reason they don't want to live together anymore what do they do they just see no they divorce they divorce and that yes. divorce is what it's separation yes god took us into that slavery and God is bringing us out, whether they like it or not. When did you ma imagine a government, they sit down and pass a law, believing that they are now trying to erase the, what, you, what they call anglophone problem. They, there should be no trace that there ex ever existed another country. Little did they know, God was trying to get them to revive the sovereignty of that country. Because when two people form a partnership, and that partner, partnership is called, called Ambe Chotu Partnership. When it is dissolved, and Ambe is, 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 is re-establishing a business of his, the partnership dies. Mm -hmm. Automatically, Chotu is independent of that. It's like a marriage. Mm -hmm. When you divorce a marriage, eh, one man does not remain married. They become all free. Mm -hmm. The problem is that Cameroon is a country built on lies. And when you put out the truth, it contradicts the system. There was a time I told uh, Pamuna in this case, say politicians and leaders usually tell lies everywhere in the world. 
But when they tell these lies, these lies are intended for the audience to believe, but not themselves. But we have reached a stage where the leaders are beginning to believe in their own lives. <laughs> that is the problem in Cameroon today. So there is no way somebody is going to come <coughs> and try to change uh, the English language because they want it to fit something that uh, they, they want to push. So journalists, and I, I am asking our people, anytime somebody puts a microphone in front of you, and if the first word that comes out of their mouth is cessation, you better just stop them. Tell them, please, I, you might want to tell me what cessation is before we go ahead. And let them define what cessation is for you, and then ask them, if that fits the context, the historical context of our relationship with La Republic. Yes, and, and what I also find find uh, interesting there is that these people all they all come and say, "Oh, uh, there should be a dialogue where you go to the root cause." The root cause you cannot start the root cause even in your own dialogue with us by calling us secessionists. Yes. No, we are not secessionists, and that's what I'm trying to, uh, to to clarify here. And I'm glad that you you very forcefully uh, made that point. The other point that they're calling us is that we're terrorists. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the Southern Cameroons have been with La Republic for 57 years now. In those 57 years, uh, people don't own guns. Our, uh, we used to have a mobile force which they integrated into their own police force and their military. So we have never, in fact, they destroyed our leadership. So we don't even have any leadership. But for those, for those, for those, uh, for those 57 years, we can name names of people who we know have died and we accuse like the public. You know what, you know what happened to Bobby Joa? Mm -hmm. What was the, what's the accusation about? What, what do you think happened to Bobby Joa? Well, look, um... And I'm just, I just want to go as far back as, as, as where we believe that, they, that they've been killing us. You, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And, go ahead, please. Yeah, I think, and here again, we have to look at the definition of the words that we use. Who is a terrorist? You understand? Because when we define... I wanted, let, let, me, let me just cut you short. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start and show who has had arms and who has been doing killing in our land up to after October 1, yeah, well, which, culmin which, which, which culminated in October 1, where they actually built an army and came. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I, and I, then I, recently when Paul B actually went and declared war. No. What, what in is, all of this, we, ne we, we never killed anybody. No, listen now. Because let us, terror is not just killing. Terror is creating I think you're correct. an atmosphere of fear you're correct. and intimidation amongst the people, amongst the population. Innocent people going about their businesses. Yes. So that is where I want us to start from. You know, because correct. when you correct. understand what that is, then you can then put all of those things in context. No, you're correct. Because the terror that the Republic started raining on us was all the way from 1961. Yes. When they, they abolished our military, seized uh, whatever things we bought at, at, at the airport to, to, to reinforce uh, our police, our mobile wing police, they seized those, sent in their gendarmes, mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. sent in their gendarmes, started arresting people, uh, all, all the kale kale's that they were doing. Yes. Yes. Brought in pool tax, create all these checkpoints. That from there, if you said anything, they looted you. looted uh, looted Ombe that had a lot of uh, that, that's a technical school. Yes, that had a lot of heavy equipment. All the equipment was moved to La Republic Cameroon. Then they they, they they moved all our public uh, PWD uh, road 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 grading material. Yeah, and th th that is the economic part of it. Let us just look at the social aspect. Does the terror? Yeah, of okay. the terror that they have created in our. In well, our when you say that, I, here's what I remember: that when we we're little, we used to remember that people would be going to work in the morning. They would do the kali kali that you were talking about, and they make all of them sit in mud. Yes, they make sure that if you wear well dressed, you sit in the mud. And that was supposed to that was obviously terrorizing you yes so that you become afraid of them yes and they and, and if you think that you're so you're so human mm -hmm. that you take care of yourself they want to show you that you're a pig yes and put you down to sit in the mud and and you can look at the way the 1972 election uh the so-called election of the referendum in 1972 was organized how many days did it take they put out the army threaten people beat people up by the time you get up in the morning the whole neighborhood is encircled by gendarmes beating people for nothing arresting people throwing people in trucks that is creating terror do you know that 20th may was uh, 
uh, Ahijo's wife's birthday. But leave that aside. So that was a birthday to her wife. So to his wife. They built on those things. And now they are coming out in the open. They, you, you, you hear these guys in some of our, our shows that we have done. One of these guys enumerated from 1995. The people that were caught in Kumbu and tortured. And some of them locked up in Bafusam. And some of them died there. People who have been arrested at every single turn. You have all these checkpoints. They beat up people, pick people up, lock them up, break their legs. Riba has talked about all of these things. So that is terror. Creating fear in the people, intimidating the people, sub make, making the people to be submissive. They, they can't think they should only be afraid. That is terror. And then when we decide that we don't want to take this anymore, they come with their guns. If students are asking for the GCE board, they shoot and kill. They are asking for whatever thing they are protesting. SDF comes and asks to form another party with his leader. They, 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 they kill people there, yes. So they kill at every single turn. And the reason they are doing that is to put fear and intimidate the people. So that the people cannot just dare to think that they can question this particular government. And when the people say no, we are not going to take this. We are going to rise up. They come with guns. In December of 2016, all through 2017, in September of 2017, on the 1st of October 2017 and every single day I can guarantee you every single day somebody has been shot somebody has been maimed somebody has been raped somebody has been locked up that is terror I want you sitting at home and watching us now to listen to what I have said and ask yourself is there any of the things that I have described that the people of Ambazonia have done to the people of La Republic absolutely not there are citizens of ambazonia who have been living with us those who ran away from the torture and the oppression of la republic du cameroon they came we gave them shelter you mean a, a citizens of la republic citizens of la republic yes eh? the the upcs and all those people who ran and came today some of them are the collaborators turning us over to la republic to Cameroon, yes, because they live in our communities, they act as agents. So the people that we gave them shelter are collaborating with our tormentors and instilling torture in our communities. So we have given them love, we have given them support, we have given them everything. We've shown them kindness, kindness. So there is no nothing about we being terrorists, because no. that there is I. That is the definition of a terrorist. Somebody who creates fear and kills innocent people. And the, uh, uh, the victims of uh, the, 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 the recent hearings that they had in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. uh, the the, human rights, the yeah. Convention Against Torture. Yes. They said it there. That is torture. Doing everything that they have done to us. The burning of houses that was done recently in Kimbong. That is what the Janjaweeds in, 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 in Sudan did to the people of, of, uh, of South Sudan. Burning of houses to intimidate people and, and make people run away. That is what they are doing to us. And those are the real terrorists. Those are the people coming into our communities early in the morning, kicking down doors, arresting people, pointing guns at people, asking people to get out of their cars and walk on their knees. So that is a terror. And who is the chief terrorist? It is Mr. Bia with his lieutenants. Isa Chiruma, Laurent Esso, Fam Dongo, you can name them. You know, um, I was going to say that um, terrorism is like racism, right? If you don't have the power to intimidate, if you don't have the power to kill, you cannot be a terrorist. That's right. We have never had any of those. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because in, in racism, uh, this, the, 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 the group that is, that is, that is has big, power, that has power that's the only group that can affect racism. So we cannot affect terrorism because we've never, we've never been, first of all, we've never been, I mean, you know, in, 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 our people have been describing us as pacifists the whole time. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that is what we have been. That and that's what we have been. They come for our government, we say, okay, take. They come for PMO, we say, okay, take. They, they, they come for economic destruction, we say, take. And they've been taking and taking and taking on. In fact, the only time they begin to run into trouble is because they are beginning now to actually uh, um, um, extinguish us from our land. They refuse to give us jobs. They take all our jobs. They, 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 they start trying to, to turn our, our citizens to be, to be francophones. And, and that is where people have drawn the line. That's where people have drawn the line that you can take everything, but you cannot come and own me and yes. own my children. That, that is where people have That's drawn the line. That's where our people have drawn the line. And then, and then people who came to power, the regime that came to power in La Republic, through genocide, through, terror, through terrorism, now turns around and calls us terrorists. Yes. yes. Can you imagine? I mean, you will be surprised that they have never been... Ahijo was never elected anywhere. No. He was never elected anywhere. No, Pobi has never been elected. So these people, we have been an organized people, and they themselves, they know it. So they have brought their disorder and every single thing to ruin our communities. And they sit today, and they are calling us terrorists. And what they have been waiting for from, from the 10th of, of November when the lawyers went, first went on the street, what they have been waiting for is for an opportunity to, for, for Paul Bia to come and say, hey, the world cannot see that we have been attacked by terrorists so that they can use the one weapon that, the only weapon that they know how to use. They don't know how to dialogue. They don't know how to be nice. They don't know how to, they don't know what equity... All they know, because the game they came to power by the battle of the gun, they were waiting to take over the southern Cameroons by the battle of the gun. And my brother, this now helps us to move into the next stage. And they have been using that battle of the gun in Manfe for the past, is it two weeks or three weeks now? No, it's been a while, since October 1st. Yeah, since October 1st. Now, what, what, tell me what you think has been happening there and what you think... What's the status of that situation? Well, like we have said before, there is a time in life where when you push somebody, you push the person, the person takes a step back. You keep pushing, he takes another step back. You keep pushing, he takes another step back until that person gets to the wall. When they get to the wall, there is no other place. They cannot take another step back. The only place they can go is to walk back into you. And that is what the people of Manu have been doing since October 1st. Because these people came out, the, the duo in Manu came out and shot somebody and killed somebody. They have been terrorizing these people. They have been raping their children, killing their women, doing all kinds of stuff. And the people have said, at this point in time, we are going to stand up to defend our communities. And they have been doing that successfully because you have seen the reinforcements that the Republic, they have a military base there and that military base is not enough. So they are bringing in reinforcements from Douala. That military operation is being commanded from Douala. So they bring in op uh, support from Douala and all of that to come in and support the war in Manu. And the people of Manu, they are fighting. They are fighting tooth and nail to defend what God gave them. Because they are not taking anything from the Republic. They are not taking anything from the Republic. They are defending their God-given rights. Rights to be human beings. Right to live with dignity. The rights to protect, to own property. And protect that property. And protect their families. And they have been doing a fantastic job at it. Yes, and, uh, and the fantastic job has been, I, I think uh, you, you need to start quantifying it. I think the fantastic job has been shown by how many... Uh, do you know that that was the first time that body bags actually left Ambazonia to go to La Republic? Yeah, well... We, for, for the 57 years that we have lived with them. Yes, we have always been the ones burying our people. Yes, so, so, so I saw a parade on television, La Republic CRTV, mm -hmm. where they had a lot of... Uh, they had this whole big show to show that uh, the, the, they've lost the truth in La Republic and uh, in Ambazonia. Mm -hmm. And I think what they're trying to do there is prepare the, the minds of the world. Or I don't know what they're trying to do, but because they're already doing what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? 
But I can tell you one thing that I have seen certain pictures that came from 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 Manfe. I saw and this is really beginning because and I'm and I want to mention this because one of the things that La Republic always thought was that we were cowards, we were spineless. In fact, they used to call us Anglo fools. Mm -hmm. Because they came and exploited us and did everything and we just let it go. Mm -hmm. So they came this time and they are stunned by the resistance they're getting in Manfi. And I'm saying this because, you know, when the, the body bags that go home, right, mm -hmm. doesn't even show the bravery of the people of Manfi. Because you can stand from afar and actually shoot somebody and run. Mm -hmm. The ones that, that, that define the bravery of the people of Manfi for me is the one where they actually cut some of their troops, break their legs, will break hands, and let them go alive. Yes, and they tell them to go leave to tell the story. And what that tells me is that they did not shoot these people from afar. It told me another thing. It told me that there was pandominium among the, uh, the, the forces of La Republic, and they scattered. Because otherwise, how would you grab somebody who is a military man who had a weapon, he's coming, he, I mean, he has his gears of war coming towards you. I mean, there must have been some pandemonium, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. where they actually, where somebody said, you stop, lie, lie down, and then they come out. You know what I'm saying? It shows you, I, I don't know, what do you think? Well, it shows the sheer determination of the Manu people. And as you said, that has sent reverberations across La Republic. Because uh, I, I think you are going to talk about this. Some of the military guys, have been deserting. They, they don't want to go to Murphy. Yes. They don't want, they say, some of them have come out with swollen faces. Those that have been allowed to leave. Those are the people that have been saying that, go back and tell your people. Take, be the messenger. Go tell the people what you have seen with your own eyes here in Manu. And tell them that anybody who is coming to Manu should know that this is the fate that awaits them in Manu. And they are deserting. Following open confrontation between some unidentified gunmen and the military on Monday, the 11th of November, 2017, in Abokem in the Mangu Division, that led to the killing of 13 of our armed forces and 26 wounded. The government has increased the security measures to target these terrorists. Also, some of our military men who deliberately refused to go and defend our national colors in the Mangu area have all been apprehended and thrown behind bars. Meanwhile, others on duty who escaped into Nigeria still await trial. They are quitting the army. They are jumping away. They are running away. Yes, I heard. I, I don't know. There's a letter that I that we received, where this uh, this 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 uh, eyewitness on the ground was saying that is it in mile 16, where yes. there's a, a speed break. Yes. And and some of the troops jumped down there and, and, and took off. Yes. You know, but 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 but, but um, I still want to come back to the fact that. Uh, yes. To catch a, a soldier, tie his feet, break the feet or break the arm, and then let them go. It tells you, it tells you the condition in which that soldier was captured. He was not captured with his, with his, uh, they, they must have been, they must have been, they must have gone, they must have scattered from their ranks. That's what I'm thinking. Exactly. And that alone gives me a picture of what type of resistance uh, the people in Bazoni are putting up in Manfi. Yes. Yeah, so this is uh, one of our viewers, and uh, we like you people to, you know, let us know what you think and some of the things that you want us to let the rest of the country know, because we know that there are efforts to curtail this information so that it should not get to the people. So here is what uh, one of our viewers says: uh, Many soldiers and bees are resisting to go to Manu, but are being forced. Some jumped off the military truck at my 16 speed break. And are, and are being hunted. They are on the run because if they are arrested, they will be taken to the military court in Yaoundé to be court martialed for desertion. So, these are the people who got the word from those people that were allowed, whose legs were broken and their hands were broken and their face swollen, to come out and tell their story that they were eyewitness to this. So, these other people deserting now are people who don't want to meet that fate. So, La Republic should know that the people of Manu have the winds on their sails and God is with them because they are not fighting to take an inch 
of anything that the Republic owns. They are merely asking the Republic to leave them alone. Leave the people of Ambazonia alone. Leave the people of Manu alone. And the Republic is not willing to do that. Now, the, the, there's another thing that I want to emphasize here. Because uh, La Republic, you know, since Pobia declared a war on Ambazonia, there are certain rules of, of engagement. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can't just go down to the war zone, catch prisoners that you've captured. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, they're these, they're these kids that they go around and pick in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and throw in their jails. Mm -hmm. No charge, no crime committed. What happened? Uh, in one of the week, in one of the, the, the events, they went and opened the jail, pushed them out, and then shot them. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a war crime. That is a war crime. And do you know who is also culpable in that war crime? The people who we have talked about who are collaborating with these war criminals because if you no but i don't want you to i don't want you to to associate uh people who are cooperating with the enemies as part of war crime i well, this is this is really a geneva war crime yes this is a geneva war crime another geneva war crime is this one where they went and burned a whole village mm -hmm. the village of uh Kembong? Yeah, Kembong? Yeah, Kembong village. They are being accused of burning down homes to avenge the killing of four gendarmes in Kembong village last week. This is an escalation of the protests and clashes of the last few months in which police and soldiers are pitted against people protesting government treatment of the Anglophone population. Andrew Kia is the Bishop of Mamfe and he's been to Kembong. I discovered my great uh, shock and dismay that the whole village was deserted. This is, and we're talking about the biggest village in central Ejagam. So it's not just a small village, it's one of the biggest villages in central Ejagam, with about four or 5,000 people. Uh, when I got there, the whole village was deserted. And I went to the father's house, uh, where the, the only place where there was life in the village, and the priest explained to me what had happened. Some strange people, Young people had come from they don't know where and uh, assassinated uh, four soldiers. And uh, two hours after that, after they had, the young men had disappeared to wherever they came from, soldiers came into the village in about three or four trucks and started uh, beating up the people, burning houses. And I discovered uh, that at least the ones I counted, at the, more than 20 houses were set on fire, had been set on fire, had been burned down completely um with uh, all the, the the content so the people were chased out beaten up and then fire was set to the house so those are the things i found there and then there were some people who had fled their homes old people children who didn't have places to run to they all ran to the father's house and so there were about uh 30 people hanging around the, the presbytery sleeping on mats and having nowhere to go and uh, those were the only people that uh, were, were found in the village. So uh, tell me, there. so tell me, who set fire to the village? It is very clear. It's an indisputable fact. The soldiers who came in set the fire two hours after the the attackers had killed the soldiers. We have to have a stronger evidence in a way, that, you know, that it was indeed the soldiers that did it. Is that what people are saying happened there? So I met at least three to to four people. Uh, four four people whose houses were burnt, who were beaten. So these are people who were thrown out of their houses by soldiers. It's mm -hmm. not some yes. thing that somebody is saying that they said. No, the men whom I met in the father's house uh, told me they were beaten by soldiers. The soldiers came in their truck, came out of the house after the, the, other, the, the four soldiers had been killed, and they came in their rage and started beating up the villagers and setting their houses on fire. Tell me, why, why did they come to this village? They came to that village because that is where they, they, as I say, these youths decided to attack the soldiers. The soldiers were there on routine controls. Uh, they were attacked there. At the other time, they have been having these sporadic attacks around the place. The other time, the young people came and attacked the gendarmerie post here in Mante. And so they have been having these things all over the place. This time, they attacked this uh, village in Kembong. And... Uh, 
Then the soldiers came in uh, after the boys had left and started brutalizing the population. Now, this situation seems to be getting worse between government soldiers, the people in, in these parts of Cameroon. Is there a solution in sight? Actually, I'm just writing a small uh, secular letter to send around the parishes uh, to be read on Christmas Day. And I'm saying that, humanly speaking, I'm not seeing any solution in sight. I'm calling for everybody to pray. And that's Andrew Nkia, the Bishop of Mamfe. I'm talking about people like Chief Abeng Ashu Samuel of Nyang Village in Akwaya. What did he do? He is one of those people that have been collaborating giving the names of the people in Akwaya to La Republic, that these are people instigating problems or creating, as La Republic has said, that they, they should give them the names of the people. So these are the people going around giving names of people, and these people have been picked up and they end up dead as we just described. Another person, you talk about Kimbong Village, Chief Etengene Tabe of Kimbong Village, and his regent and the secretary, those are the people who went around and showed people's ha- the houses that were burnt down in Kimbong were the houses of people that were pinpointed by this chief, Etengeneng Tabe. And that's just an accusation. No, it is not because... No, I mean that they cannot... They, they just accuse those people yes, of... Uh, yeah, exactly. it's, not, it's not like they caught them doing anything. Exactly. And it might be that they just have some kind of a personal vendetta with these people. And they are going to make them, turn them over to La Republic. We talked a couple of weeks ago of the other chief that called these guys to come and share a drink with him and called the La Republic people to come and pick them up. So these people are collaborators. And part of what we do on this show is to call out people who do things that not only uh, work against the struggle, but that have consequences in the lives of the people of our people. And when I'm talking about this, I'm equally talking because I have got some feedback about the, the case that we discussed in my village, in Babanki Tungo. Yes. When this guy was picked up and turned over that, he burned down uh, some... In the church. The, 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 the draperies the, in the, the church. The draperies in the church. Yes. So, if you come out in that situation and you're accusing somebody without any facts, without any evidence, and then you turn this person in, and that person now is sitting in Yaoundé. Well, to you, maybe you just thought that you wanted him to be taken maybe to Tuba or someplace like that and be locked up. Well, do you know where that person is now? Do you know if that person will ever come back to their family? So whatever your motive is, this government is not a government that you can't be playing those games with. Because their goal is to eliminate us. And when they have you in their net, when they cast their net and they pull you into that net, they're going to suck No, you're block. done. You're that done. That is it. You're done. Um. So people need to understand this, that whatever you are doing, if you put people's lives in danger, know that the fate that meets that, those people might meet you too. So we have to be very careful. And people need to understand this. Um, you know, I we had cries from uh, from from Kimbong. I want to go back there again. Mm-hmm. I, I'm surprised you said they only touched the houses of people who. Uh, my my understanding was that they burned the whole village. That's what some of the people have been complaining. Yeah, they burned a significant part of the village. Okay. I mean, if you come into a village that has been active like that, it is easy for you to to. to I, I don't know what the population of Kimbong is. Mm-hmm. But when people look at the, the bishop went there, the, you saw some of those pictures. The bishop went there and in his interview on the BBC, that is what he said. So the people might have gone out that they are going to go out and deal with those who are fighting against the government. But then they just went on a rampage and said, who cares whether you are part, you are part of the, you are, you are supporting the, the, the separatists or you are against the government. I am going to deal with everybody. I'm going to, you know, I just, I, 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 I just, thought about something and I smiled. Uh, Chiroma, did you watch Chiroma's uh, press conference? Yes, I did. Uh, you can tell that he is not, he is not as um, cocky as he was before. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, he gave this excuse. I want to see what you say about the excuse, because that excuse is not going to change. He gave an excuse that oh, the reason why uh, La Republic couldn't stand the 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 resistance of the people of Mangi was because there was forest. Is that forest going to disappear? No, the, the for, that is an instrument of war. That is its topography. And if it works, if it works in your advantage, you have to use it. So uh, if he, he doesn't know, let him send his, his military people to Betwa, there's forest in Betwa. Let them go and train there and come back. No, I, and, and you're just saying what I wanted to say. I was going to say that these are tropical troops. Um, uh, I mean, it, they, they, they sound as though they came from Europe or from, or from Saudi Arabia in the desert. No, these are people. You see, the army of La Republic is trained to terrorize its own citizens. And they can only terrorize the citizens who are never putting up a resistance. Mm -hmm. Here are, do you know that so far it's only kids who have been resisting them? Yeah, that you, you will not even call a rat tag army. No, it's not, I mean, you can't even call them an army. You remember? No, uh, this, uh, these are children. Yes, you with, remember? With nothing, bare you, hands. You remember, in, what, in fact, any weapons that they have, they took them from, from, from La Republic's army. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You remember I was telling you in the first show that I was I was shocked about the the resistance yeah, because because I knew we were going to get to that point but I did not think we were ready and if they're now giving excuses about oh there's too much forest come on you, yeah. you know what I'm saying because these people that, nobody owns guns in Cameroon the few people that own guns are privileged civilian people so if you own a gun they know you so they are going to come for so these people don't have anything. They are fighting with their bare hands and they are doing a fantastic job. Now, and, and see, but see, when you talk about Chiruma getting a press conference, some people might want to mistake what, because that's not a press conference. Okay? He comes and sits in front of the camera and reads something he himself has said. Uh, they just bring those things to me and I come and I sit down and I read it. That's not a press conference. A press conference is where somebody in his position as a spokesman for the government comes out, makes a statement, and takes questions from the press. Yes. Then people ask, the press asks him questions, and question him on his assertions and on other stories that they, they want to follow up and stuff like that. There is an exchange between the government spokesperson and the press, so that the public can be more informed. That is not what is happening in, in that situation. If you ask Chiruma a question like that lady uh, on Equinox TV asks, he will tell you that he's going to close your TV. I was going to say that... Uh you are comparing a White House press conference to a lot of public's press conference. You can't, Pat, there's no, there's, there's actually no way to do that. I am not comparing it. I am trying to tell you that don't call it a press conference. It yes, is, and, you, and you're right in correcting it, because it, when somebody hears press conference, they'll think, they'll think of something like yes. that. No, it is a dictator, an agent of the French who comes out and states what the law is. Do you notice that even the journalists are worried about the questions? They, they first of all have to give a lot of homage before they ask a question. No, they don't, they don't ask questions. I've not seen any of them ask any questions. Those who were caught red-handed in act of vandalism or sponsoring act of public disorder. He just makes a statement. Everybody sits there and they look at him and then they get up and they walk out. No, I'm, I'm talking about the journalists. Right? Yes. That the journalists themselves they know their place. Mm -hmm. If you look at the way the journalists ask questions, they, they make sure they couch it right. And then when, when Chiroma cannot ask it, cannot answer the question, he turns and attack them. Yes. I mean, I, I, there, there was a one episode where... Let, let me just finish this, okay? Mm -hmm. He attacked this journalist and, and, and started asking the journalist, uh, who do you represent? You, don't, you were not elected by anybody. But, and I'm thinking, no. In any democracy... The, the role of the journalist is, 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 is separate. Yeah, they're the third journalist, arm of the government. They're the third arm of the government. A journalist doesn't have to be elected by anyone. They're supposed it, to hold government accountable. They're supposed to hold government and everybody else accountable because if you go there now and you do something which is crooked, the journalist will report it they have the facts. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So I listen to Choroma and I'm like, that is the country where somebody expects you to be running to, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Instead of being... Um, what did what word did he use? Uh, you know, he used the word and said, you know, uh, the people in the diaspora are stranded well, abroad. Well, stuck. Stuck abroad, you know. <laughs> now I, I want to say another thing about Chiroma and, and this and this is whole I think he's gotten that power and it's gone into his head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And I think he does that because that's the culture in which he grew. Mm -hmm. Power comes from the top. Power comes from France. They slam on them. They turn and slam on them. The way he treated that lady on Equinox. Votre responsabilité majeure, c'est de savoir que vous êtes gardien de l'orthodoxie gouvernementale en matière de gouvernance de notre nation. Vous êtes des responsables. Votre responsable. Oui, vous êtes communicateur, madame. Alors c'est en cela que vous m'apparaissez comme quelqu'un de dangereux si vous ne réalisez pas la puissance que... Écoutez, tout le monde suit Canal 2. Supposez donc vous, vous faites venir un sécessionniste ici, vous lui donnez votre télévision, il dit « Ah non, il faut diviser la nation ». Monsieur le ministre, vous parlez aussi de démocratie et donc de liberté d'expression. Et vous l'avez dit, le président national a dit « On est dans un pays où on n'a plus besoin d'aller en exil pour exprimer ses opinions ». Alors pourquoi est-ce que vous... Vous pouvez en, en ce moment aussi euh, tragique, on va pas, je, je vais peut-être retirer le terme tragique, mais le moment est tendu et puis vous nous dites, ok, ne donnez plus la parole à certains Camerounais. Pourquoi, monsieur le ministre Parce qu'ils veulent détruire notre nation, parce qu'ils ont été de ceux-là qui, profitant de l'ignorance et de la naïveté de quelques-uns de nos compatriotes, Ils leur disent beaucoup plus grave, madame, si Canal 2 existe aujourd'hui et vous êtes en train de convaincre les uns et les autres, parce qu'il y a la paix dans cette nation. C'est bien. S'il n'y avait pas la, la paix, je ne serais pas avec le gouverneur, je suis sous sa responsabilité pour faire ça. Vous donnez la parole à ceux qui veulent diviser la nation, et bien ma foi, demain vous ne serez plus là. C'est une menace, monsieur le ministre Je ne vous menace pas, je vous dis ce que vous devez faire. Ce n'est pas une menace. Mais vous devez comprendre que, à donner la parole aux sécessionnistes, Je fermerai votre télévision. Here is one of the brightest journalists, young journalists developed in Cameroon, in La République. She's trying to do her job properly, mm -hmm. as she was trained in school. And she tries to ask the right questions and tries to, to take the principles of democracy and freedom of press and pose a question. And all Chiruma needed to do was answer the question. He turns and threatens him and threatens her. Mm -hmm. And says, if you do that again, I would, I would, I'm, I'm going to... Yeah, and she did a very good job. And she asked a lasting question that Chiruma will go to his grave with that question. Is it a threat, Mr. Minister? Well, I'm, well it was a threat. Yeah, well, and she wanted to know. Yeah, she wanted to know. Yeah. Are you threatening me? Yes. Are you telling me that I can't do my job the way I've been trained to and do? And what Chiruma said, try again, I'm, tomorrow I'll close your television. Yeah, exactly. So he confirmed that that's what i'm saying it was a threat yeah it was yeah. a threat and let me say this if you think that chiroma and the regime that he works for is only threatening that journalist no they threaten everybody if you're a journalist and you want to do good journalistic work in, in, in la republic you are not allowed to if you're a mechanic or an engineer and you want to develop a product in la republic you are not allowed to you know there was a time when you couldn't even record a song in la republic you had to go to france mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. so you wonder why the place is not developing these are people, these are plantation, uh, uh, these are plantation managers who are armed to the teeth to suppress the people, mm -hmm. suppress their creativity, suppress their ingenuity, suppress their humanity, and they want to bring it to us. And when you try anything, you know, when they call us terrorists, you know. You take away everything. They want to take away your thinking. The only thing you are allowed to do in the Republic is to drink. You're allowed to drink and you're, allowed to, you're also allowed to cheer for the football yes, team. Yes, that's all. That's, that's the only thing that you can do freely and nobody will ask you. And sometimes even when you're drinking, they come and harass you people there that you don't have a, a license to open. And this, no, but if you give them their own drink, they'll, they'll yeah, stop. Yeah, that, that is the thing. Yeah, you give know? them their own drink, they'll stop. So, that is, so even what you have been allowed to do so that you can intoxicate yourself and not be able to think anything, the police still come there and harass you in that in that in, in that situation. Go back to to that country and try to open a business that would even employ some of the youth. They will let you. You will not get it. Chiroma or Chiroma's type are going to show you how much power they have. Mm -hmm. They say, uh, "How much do you have to invest?" Oh, I have uh, five thousand dollars to invest. Well, you have to come and give me two hundred and fifty first. Mm -hmm. I will say no, he says, then you will have no, yeah, business. no business. The same thing they did, did, the same thing Chiroma did to the journalist. If you don't want to listen to, to, to what I'm going to say, I'll close the television tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you don't dance to my tune, you will not exist. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's how the place is. Yes. You know, the people of, Southern, uh, of Ambazonia say, let's, let's re examine this relationship that we came into and met you and we're supposed to create a union. He said, no, if, you don't, if you're not going to have it my way, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. 
and that's what they're doing mm -hmm. that is what they're doing pa like you and i just said um our people are not even fully engaged in a war yet no because i can tell you that if we were uh, if, we, if we were fully engaged these chiefs that you and all these collaborators they will not have a chance to go and to go and do that well, you know what i'm saying yeah and and in every struggle you have people like that in every struggle you have people like that if you go to south africa we all of us are students of the the anc resistance so we had chief with lazy and his gang working for the for the apartheid group so in every single community you have people like that that are called snitchers who go around making all these uh as, as um spies and things like that but what i'm saying is that when you get up in the morning and you decide that you are going to be on the side of the oppressor against your people you are an enemy yeah you are an enemy let me let me just you go you are an enemy and people need to know that because either they are going to put you where they will kill you or they themselves will kill you let me let me say let me let me give an advice to this uh, to these collaborators okay i've been talking to people who have served like the public i'm i'm in legitimate serving now mm -hmm. um they will tell me that when they're in that position, their phones are ringing, the call phones, the phones are being answered any minute. But immediately they, they, they're out of that position, the phone lines go dead. No, nobody, nobody picks your Nobody call. takes back your call. So I can tell you, be collaborating with them. I tell you, one day, because you know them, you come one day and they just put a bullet on your head because that's, that's how they are. But let me say something that Chiruma, that I, I, I observed during the Chiruma's uh, press conference again. The man was sucking up to Nigeria big time. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Did you, I think the journalist said, well, during the Biafran war, uh, Ahijo and uh, the Nigerian president were talking all the time uh, and wonder whether that's going on now. The man sucked up to Nigeria and uh, you know how he told lies one time that they were, that Nigerian Cameroon army collaborated in, in stopping people who wanted to cross the border? Yeah, well. They're sucking up to Nigeria, but guess what? Um... Um, the governor of the southwest wanted to put a boatload to drive and go to refugee camps in Nigeria. What happened? Well, the, there's food that was coming in, and the Nigerian government said they have to go through the right channels. But you know, no, he was going to just drive in, and he was told to not not to do that. Yeah, you have to seek. I mean, he, he who is he? Even uh, but, but but tell me, tell me. So you know, this follows the same thing where they go to. To acquire, they kill people, put them all into the bushes, and then come and set a stand and like, okay, we have some rice and salt here, come and take. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So the governor of the Southwest, the colonial governor of the Southwest, after his, his, uh, his colonial troops have driven all these people into, into, into exile, into refugee camps, they wants to, they wants to put food and drive into those refugee camps. I, 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 does it make sense to you? I, I've never seen something like that. I've never seen where uh, the people, the oppressor, goes after the refugees when they have escaped to another country to go and take care of those refugees. If you were ready to take care of them, they will not be refugees. No, they will not be refugees. So why this? Um, I, 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 it, it's see I, now I, the world. Should, the world should see the kinds of people that they force us to live with. Yes, because if they really wanted to do something humanitarian, right? If they wanted to really do something, the people that their soldiers shot, who are lying in hospitals with amputated legs, hands, uh, wounds everywhere, there's a little girl that the face was blown out, and she's the family is struggling to raise money so she can go abroad and get. They some. would have taken care of that child. Exactly. They would so have taken if, care of that if, child. If these are people that really care, that is where you start. But you have not seen any of that. You are struggling to go take care of people that the Nigerian government has already provided free health care to them. The rest of the Ambazonian people in the diaspora are struggling and sending food shipping containers and providing them. The United Nations is trying to do what they can do. And then you get up now and you want to go and feed your dogs. The people you call that dog. Yeah, you want to go and feed his dog. But let me say what they're doing. I think one, I, I was going to make this point that 
when they call Ambazonian terrorists, you know they, what they what they're really trying to do? They are, they're playing government. They're not really a government. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a mafia. It's a syndicate. Mm -hmm. So they play government. Mm -hmm. And so George Bush actually faced terrorism in America. He comes out and said and talks and talked about terrorists and start fighting terrorists worldwide. So like the public looks at that and say, hey, you, we can take cover under that too mm -hmm. and make that definition and, and make the same kinds of declarations and, and, and go after very good citizens who have been taking your shit for, for a very long time and now they're saying they're, gonna, they're not going to take it anymore. Yeah, they, they have to do that in order to use the resources that they get from the American government to go and fight Boko Haram, to come and fight our people. They can use uh, the 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 um, the planes that France gets. Yes, the helicopters. Those, those unmanned uh, aircrafts and go around the drones. And, the drones and spy on our people because those are things that have been provided to them to fight Boko Haram. So they can call us terrorists. But look, Nelson Mandela once said, somebody's terrorist, someone who is a terrorist and another person's freedom fighter. And let me let them know if you have ever read uh, Frederick Forsyth, The Dogs of War, those dogs of war have been let loose in Manu and they are going to fight. They are trying to recruit... Uh, they are trying to recruit people from... <laughs> they are trying to recruit people from Manfei. Yeah, have, you, have you... Just imagine this, right? Have you ever heard this story where they, they say mm -hmm. if you can't beat him... Join them. Join them. Yes. <laughs> so they have gone to Manfei and they have discovered that these guys are tough. Yeah, they're good. So what what are they trying to do? They say, oh, come, we're going to recruit you into the army because they know the kind of force that they have there. But, so, but, but it's not really a laughing matter. I think it tells you something about, about, about these people. Mm -hmm. They are not principled. They are not ashamed. They're, well, let me make this point. They are not principled. They, they 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 don't even believe in the war that they're fighting against Ambazonians. No, they can't. Because they're doing it for the French. But they should know that any single fighter of Ambazonia that's out there is there as a matter of principle. It's not money. So you cannot give them a job. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because what they're trying to say, come, we'll give you this money. You understand? Yeah. That's right. That that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. No, all our fighters. Are, fighting are fighting as a matter of principle. After fighting for a cause. Yes. All the people who, who you see showing their faces and fighting you, they are fighting for a cause. They believe what they are doing and they're ready to die for it. That's right. Okay? They're ready to die for it. And, and, and those are real people. Not you who is paid by foreigners to come and kill your own people, uh, stunt your own people so they don't grow, make your country remain a third world country forever. And then you play king. You play king there. Chiroma wears his big guns and come and sit. If you do that, I'm going to shut down your television. That's a lot of power, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of power, isn't it? Yeah. Just like uh, his boss told uh, this guy, what's his name again? Um, that if I check, if I just check my head, you disappear. Absolutely. The same thing. Uh, they say, qu'est-ce que vous allez faire? Mm -hmm. You remember? Yeah. You were asking. Uh, um, my man Weber. My man, yeah, they were asking Weber, what are you going to do? It's all King Kong power. No, no. Think. Think. That's not what the Koreans did to build their country. That's not what the Ghanaians are doing to build their country. That's what anybody who is trying to build his country does. What you do is you harness the, the spirit of... Uh, you know, I, I don't know this lady's name of Equinox. What's her name? You remember? You know her name? The journalist? Yes. No, I don't remember her name. But, but, well, but she knows who we're talking about and people know who we're talking about. People like that, you harness them. Make them be great journalists so that someday they could, they could get out some great information that will help our people. They will straighten the lives of, our, of, 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 of La Republic. Your, your, your engineers train, allow them, give them opportunities, fund them. Don't take money and go and build hospitals in other countries. Don't take money and fund it in Swiss accounts. B build your own country so that you can have some... Re you see, the way he, he was... The way Chiroma was disrespecting uh, the lady, the journalist, mm -hmm. he cannot do that to a white journalist 
who is not even as qualified as that lady is. No, because wouldn't. he has an inferiority complex. He knows that white people command him. I can tell you that he would never do that. Yes. Yeah. But but he's been given power to sub, to suppress his own people, and so he comes and he sees the. Uh, if you do that, I'm going to shut your tail. Is it Dakota a bit more? Let's come to the secretary of uh, the, the secretary, the Commonwealth secretary who visited La Republic. Mm -hmm. You and I talked about this on on, on the old, on our last show, mm -hmm. um, and I told you that this lady was not sent by the Commonwealth. She was invited by Dion Gute. Mm -hmm. That's the name, yeah. By Dion Gute. Um, and and that was sometimes in March. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, let me say this, okay. And I talked a little bit about 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 how the French negotiate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you, you nailed it. Yes, I think these people saw. You know, the, the invitation came in March. We had started our our very serious prost protest in in um, in November. Yeah, the previous year. Yes. So, so these people realize that the Commonwealth has a has a traditional relationship with the with the people of Ambazonia. Mm -hmm. So they preempted that to go and invite this woman. She came. They do, they do what the French do. They roll the red carpet. Mm -hmm. They roll the the twenty course meal. Mm -hmm. mm? mm -hmm. They give they they for the treatment of a queen. Give lavish how we gives. Give her a trophy. Give, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm just. You don't even know what was done at the background. That's the one you saw. Yes. So they lavish how we gives. What do you think they're doing? Well, you could you could tell that what they were doing was successful in what she had to say. If you listen to her speech, I mean, you said that uh, the French know how to negotiate because. The, you, the, 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 the art of negotiation, I don't know the name, the title of that book that you described. So they treated her well, and you heard her when she got up to speak. She couldn't speak? No, no, well, she spoke. She spoke the language that they wanted her to speak. Well, I said she, I said she couldn't speak because I know she knows more than she was saying. Well, and, and we can only go by what she said. Yes. She said, this government uh, has a good record in human rights. We know what the... Uh, Convention Against uh, Torture Commission said in Geneva was very different. She said uh, there is good governance. I don't know if she watched those uh, those tirades, the, the, the SDF Shirat in Parliament, the Vovozulas the that they were blowing all over the. No, planet. did she watch where kids are walking on the they, they're walking on the, the road and they and they target them with guns and shoot? Those Did she are, watch those? Those are the things. So I, that's a war crime. Yeah. So those I mean, those are the things that. We are saying that she is after drinking their champagne and getting their trophy names to start speaking their language. Because these things have been happening. Let us just assume, because she just recently became Secretary, Secretary General for the Commonwealth. But at least she has read. And if somebody invites you to come visit them, at least you'll find some background on what you're going to talk she about. She should have read what the State Department wrote on La Republic, well, their human rights record. Yes. She should have read that. She should have read what Amnesty International has written. She knows. She should have read all those things. Oh, you, so 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 she she was just drinking the lot of public cooling. No, so you want to tell me that she does not know those things? I, I don't know, pa. Like well, I, it, it's you who said that we should judge her by what she said. Yeah, and, and that is what she said because so she's drinking like like public cooling. That is that's what I'm saying. She knows all those things. She uh, if she did not know, why was she talking about dialogue? It's a shame. If she did not know what was happening there, you know, I looked at why that woman was she talking about dialogue. I looked at that woman. I was I felt so sorry for her because. You know, she lives in a society that's critical. Mm -hmm. And she knows she's going to go back and people are going to look at her and look at what she did down there and they know that it's rubbish. Mm -hmm. Okay? If a thief invites you to her home or to, to his home and you know that that's not an upright citizen, don't go because you can never come out clean. Yeah, but even if you go, have the audacity as a citizen of the world, as the custodian of that charter of the Commonwealth that talks about good governance, human rights, 
democracy and all of those things those beautiful things the mission of the commonwealth and everything she is the custodian of those ideas if you are going to go into one of these countries and the people for whom that country is a member of the commonwealth is currently being subjugated you have to say something about it absolutely you have to say something some people i saw people saying that oh they should not say anything she's just there to observe them once she leaves she'll probably say something. if you don't say something to them in the face nobody's going to arrest you no she's on the stage yes she is on the stage at that time you, are, you have to say it there because anything else you say will be whispering and nobody's going to listen to you exactly nobody will hear you i can remember when uh, obama went to visit the, the african union yes you heard what he you heard what he said yeah, there. there was no diplomacy no he, he said it when uh, macron went to uh, to to ghana what did the president of Ghana say? Right in front of him. Yes. Right there on the stage. Yeah, that we don't need anything from the French. If the French, we, we need to build our own, we need to build our own country. So I don't want anybody trying to make excuses for this woman that she was being diplomatic. No. She had been wine and dined and she was speaking their language. That is all I can say. I told you before she went that I don't believe in any of these organizations. And to add to that, the kind of treatment that she got none of these uh the gutierrez who just left from there did not get any treatment like that no and the reason they were robbing her like that is because they know that they are part of this thing because of us because of ambazonia yes that is why they are in the common world yes so in order for them to tell the common world that everything is good in that region we are all fine they have to do all this and the guy comes the language of communication in the Commonwealth is what? It's English. And then uh, Bivono comes out and addresses her in French. Paul Bia addresses her in French and, and he's the president of a bilingual country. Exactly. I, I, was, I was watching all of that and so, I'm like, wow. What, 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 do you, what, what do you people want to tell us? Yes. Eh? Well, you know, and we, then he talks about a uh, 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 bilingualism commission. As if that is something you celebrate. But what is this so-called bilingualism commission? So I, I don't understand. Are we suffering a problem of bilingualism? I, I don't know because uh, this guy who is in jail now, what uh, the professor from New York, uh, uh, he said one of the... Patrice? Patrice. Yes. The, he went to Boya and all of the people that he met in Boya, in every single place that he went, spoke to him in French. It's because all the jobs are given to francophones. I'm sure he was meeting them in their offices. No, no, no. Even our own people, because we have to learn that language. Oh, in order, in order to, in order to survive. Yes, okay, okay. I see. I, I get the point. Yes, we learn that language not because we want to, but because we have to survive. And so, every single person that you meet, if you speak to them in French, they would speak some French to you. And he if, was no matter how broken it is. Yes, he was surprised that he was able to communicate very well with people in all of these places that he visited. So our problem is not a problem of bilingualism. So he is solving a problem that does not exist. No, and that's how these people are. When we, whenever we ask for something, they go and bring something else. No, they go and create what the problem is and solve. They create their own problem that they have a solution with because they don't want to address our issues. Mm -hmm. But it, it's becoming too late now. Yes. And, I, and I think that... Um, 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 so we, they, we, we've gotten the point and, um, and um, we've crossed the Rubicon. Yeah, so some of the, the other things that she said in her speech was that one of the good things that Cameroon is a good member of the Commonwealth is that it, it attends all the uh, governmental meetings. I heard that. Meetings. I heard that. And, and I was like, really? There was recently a, a mini, youth minister. A youth in Uganda or something like Uganda, that. And, and Cameroon was there. And Cameroon was there. And I looked at the youngest minister that they have. It is a poor Fuda. 66 years 66 old. 66 years old. Yes. So Fuda was a youth that went to Uganda and I am I, I, I and I'm asking this woman why why do you have to humiliate yourself like this? There is nothing better than the truth. I'm gonna give you two reasons for on her on her defense, okay? Okay, I'm listening. Yeah. One is that he was a guest to the BIA government and family. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be rude to your guest. Mm. The second was that if people don't respect themselves and do the right thing, you will not respect them. 
okay so he came and realized that um you know you talked about you talked about uh, Barack Obama at the, at the AU he respected the AU um, I don't think this woman respected at this point it's kind of shaky but 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 all I'm trying to say is that maybe she didn't look at it like this is something that I should really this is not a place for me to really spell policy yeah. And and maybe she doesn't. Nobody really cares about it anyway. So no, well, then she shouldn't go. No, she came as a guest. No, I mean, okay. well, this, this lady is from yeah. the Caribbean. Listen, let me let me just finish this. This lady is from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yeah, I know she's from the Caribbean. Yes, and maybe she's never gone been to Africa. Dominica. Well, so so this she, was her trip it, to Africa well, and listen and um well she came in a context. And that context is the common world. And it is that context where she where she fails all of us. That, that's what I'm saying. That's what we need. She to fails say. us as a black person, and she fails us as a, as a leader of the common world. Yes. So I am glad that you, you you came around with that because there is no other way that you need to see this. It, it, she was invited not as a Patricia Scott land, but as the secretary of the common world. And when you accept that invitation as the secretary of the common world, there are people that you represent. And the people of Ambazonia who are getting out of this relationship now are part that it's the reason that you are in that country. Otherwise, you will not be invited. And when you accept that invitation, you have to speak for the things that concern those people that you represent. And she did not do that. Um, Chiromo has started this topic, I'm, I'm, and I've touched on it, I'm going to go back. And, and I think that we should really. I don't know. Do you even think I'm going to ask the question and then you can tell me whether we should discuss it or not, okay? Mm -hmm. Does Nigeria have a role to play in this struggle of Ambazonians trying to get out of this colonial empire? Well, Nigeria might have a role. Every country in the world has a role. Because if you are a country like let's take for the united states for example that upholds human dignity why was uh gaddafi thrown out because some people said in washington and in europe and said but uh, gaddafi was a threat to the people of Benghazi, so let's go get him out so those nations thought that they wanted to create a more stable place for the people of Benghazi and Libya. So the role that Nigeria has to play is to support the efforts of the people of Ambazonia because we are fighting to live a life of dignity. We have a special relationship with Nigeria, don't get me wrong. And I'm not saying that they should support our efforts just because of that special relationship that we have. But what I'm saying is that as a giant of Africa, as a country where this thing is happening directly in its backyard, it has a very significant role to play. Okay, I, I agree with you. Uh, I, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that colonialism is a crime. And what we are suffering in Ambazonia is a crime of colonization. And Nigeria has a, a duty, a duty, Mm -hmm. to help us get out of that crime. It's an international crime. The French have played it and played it and, 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 and if, I'll tell you, if the French were not a Western power, the French would not still be in Africa because they would have been accused of that crime and, and kicked out of Africa by modern African powers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time when the French supported Biafra in order to break up Nigeria because they did not want a strong, a big Anglo power surrounded by these colonial states that France has put around it. And so Nigeria has a role to play. And if Nigeria gives us that support, this will be out of our land within a week. Because, you know, small Uganda mm -hmm. helped Paul Kagame. He kicked out the French and, and, and their Hutu supporters all the way into, into in fact, they went all the way into, into DR, Kinshasa. DRC, yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So Nigeria needs to, as a matter of duty, to support us. Nigeria cannot buy into the Nigeria cannot buy into the into the charade, into the schemes that La Republic runs. Okay? They, they cannot buy into it. And so uh, the people of La Republic themselves are, are colonial subjects. But that's a different story. We want to, we, we are just about the Ambazonian story. We are fighting colonization and, and I believe that the, 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 the Nigerian government owes us to support because if a crime is happening next door um, and if you don't solve that crime guess what the you have refugees in your country you have refugees in your country we don't want to be refugees we want to be a, 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 a trading partner we want to form partnerships that that make us grow as Africa because as Africans we are the last continent that is yet to be developed and so we cannot continue to accept these these foreign schemes that they run around our countries uh, around 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 Africa so that's that's my appeal to Nigeria you have anything to add bro? well um, I would like to inform the people of the Northwest that the Republic has passed a law where the president has signed sent the law to Parliament and they are going to be coming for all of your den guns all your chat rooms that you have to go to Bafut Palace and shoot Manjong and all those things they are going to be coming from the, for, for them and even your your machetes you your cutlasses you know, and your axes yes, maybe your pen knives this time uh -huh. and be careful with your with your eating fork they may take it too you know in my village uh, the, this is about the time that they do death celebrations and manjong and kenshang and all those things are very important when people you know they do this well, work more mock world scenarios and all that kind of stuff you know the warriors that we are so the republic has made this law and they are going to be coming for those who are gone. They know some of the people that have gone permits so they know exactly where they will be looking for. But the reason I'm telling you is this it interferes with our culture who we are. What these people are telling us now is that they have killed our legal system they have killed our educational system. They have killed the culture that we inherited from our colonial master, which is what makes us different from them. Now they are coming for our traditional rights. They are coming to take some of those things that make us the proud warriors, the graphic proud warriors that we are. Those din guns that we go and celebrate uh, our uh, dead celebrations and shoot with pride and do all of those things in, in a festive mode. They are coming for that now. So, my question to you is, after they take all of these things from you, what will be left? It will be your soul. So are you just going to sit around and wait for them to do this? Or you are going to rise up like the people of Manu? And stand to defend yourselves and defend your community. But but, but don't forget that uh, I think in that same story that you just mentioned, I read there that uh, they were in is it Munyenge? Uh, yes, Munyenge. And uh, and the that they were more out there to extort money than even. No, they went for the guns, and then they saw the cocoa money. You remember we talked about the show here, so they saw the cocoa money because it was cocoa season. And they took the money. They took twenty million CFA, uh, CFA from 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 those farmers, farmers yes. and left the guns. They did they, not take they the guns. Didn't take the guns because the money was so. These guys are pirates. They are thieves. That's what they are. But when they come to the northwest, they'll probably they'll probably take some money, but they will not see cocoa money like twenty million. So you might have. Well, there may be coffee money. I don't know if coffee still grows, but yeah, you know. well, coffee grows, but it's not as uh, marketable as cocoa. So we should be prepared because as we have said on this show so many times we did not look for this fight we never went out to look for this fight we came to these people and told them that these are the problems that i think that we have and all the way from 1961 we have pointed all of these things to them at every single turn 
why did AAC one and AAC two happen? Those same things, the 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 statement that was read after AAC one. If you go back and look at what the lawyers were saying in 2016, it is the same thing. That's 23 years later. So we have decided that we are just going to fight this fight now. We have to get this thing out of the way and be done with it so that we can start building ourselves. And no matter the pain, no matter the strain, Please look forward only to the game. Thank you.